Hi, I'm Dr. Alan Feller. Dr. Blake Bloxham. And we're from Feller and Bloxham Hair Transplants in Great Neck, New York. And what we're doing today is giving a play-by-play -play explanation as to how we performed a procedure on the patient you're seeing on the screen in front of you. And we think this is important and necessary because a lot of people have absolutely no idea what we're thinking mm -hmm. when we plan out a procedure. So we thought sort of football style, it might be a good idea to go into the play-by-play. Play-by-play, yeah. So let's do it. Let's go back to the start um, on this video here. And here's this young man. He's only in his mid-20s mm -hmm. or so. And you can see he still has a lot of hair on the back. But in the front, he has maybe the remnant of a little mohawk. And we can see how he has no hair on the hairline whatsoever. Yeah, this, this immediately strikes me as a very, very classic, probably the most classic pattern mm -hmm. I see, where um, the way the hair loss likes to invade is it starts in these corners here and it moves up. I believe you call it a, a pincer yeah, like movement, the German though, like pincer, the German pincer movement, movement. Right. And what it does is it leaves um, these young men with, with this little classic little tuft uh, and usually some thinning, definitely some thinning in front of the tuft, a lot of times thinning behind the tuft, and then thicker hair starting back there in what I call the bridge. Sometimes they can have thinning in the crown behind the bridge, but this, what we see, is very classic. And the approach that we have drawn on here is something that we refer to as the frontal band or the mohawk buster, where we're basically working around this little tuft in the middle. Um, for this patient, because he has thinning behind it as well, we will rebuild the hairline, densely pack the frontal band immediately behind the hairline, and then fill behind the tuft. Right. You can see here, there's, of course, everybody sees the purple line here where the hairline should be. But if you look over here, you'll actually see a second line. And this line goes across here and back up the other side. And that's the frontal band yeah. that Dr. Bloxham was talking about. That's to rebuild the hairline so that when people look at you, like you're looking at me now, you can actually see an actual hairline. And of course, mine's all hair transplants as well. I don't even have as much hair as you're seeing here. Yeah. For me, the frontal band's everything. That's my favorite thing to do. That's the first well, conversation I have with patients is, is I call it the foundation. You the know, foundation. once that frontal band is, is stabilized and it's, it's rebuilt, you're in pretty good shape. No matter what happens behind it, you're always gonna have that strong frontal foundation and you're always gonna look pretty good. You know, right. worst case scenario for this guy, once his frontal piece is done, is you look like a guy that naturally has thinning only in the back. And that's a normal pattern. There are a lot of people that thin that way that only have oh, the thinning in the back. I don't think he'll look like he's thinning in the back. Oh, him look absolutely how much not. He still has. That, oh, no, no, yeah. no, no way. I mean, he's got something starting here, but uh, That could just yet. be a part too. I mean, I agree with you, it's a little wide, but he's got so much in the yeah. back. He's not He's not gonna be in that scenario, I completely well, agree. Well, here he is about a year later or Beautiful. so, same exact patient. Yeah. And what you see here is that he prefers to comb his hair from the side, which is good. Folks, when you get a hair transplant, you must use styling. Find the styling that <laughs> makes you look as thick yeah. as possible. Yeah. I've had too many patients come in, their hair is all tussle, tussled, not washed, and I say, well, it doesn't look as thick as it should. Well, of course it doesn't. Even people with normal hair don't look as thick as they should when they don't style it. When you use styling, you get a layering or a shingling effect, and it gives more of a poof and a better look. So here you can see now he actually has a real hairline going all the way across, and you can see he has some real volume here. Yeah. And he still has his hair in the back, so he's sort of combing it all together to give you the impression that he has just one mass of hair from front to back. I'd say that's pretty effective. Yeah, and that's a very important aspect of transplants that is sometimes not discussed is the way it blends in with the native hair. When you're looking at this overhead shot from the patient, um, you know, it's, it's difficult to tell, if not impossible to tell where the transplants end and his own native hair begins. Because right, everything, everything blends in, that's a successful transplant there. All right, let's continue. So here's the hairline, and this is the band that you were referring to earlier. And what most people, when they come in here, uh, that's really what they're looking to have yeah, prepared agreed. because yeah. it's once your hairline, not that he would know, but once your hairline <laughs> has cut from here up to here and your forehead became a five head, so to speak, you know it's time to do something and you can try all the Rogaine and Propecia in the world. It's not going to bring back this no. sort of hair no. or his hair. Uh, so if you look here, we said to him, this young man, we need to rebuild this before we do anything else. This needs to be rebuilt. And we did. We We packed that area out. And this is how he looked when he visited us about a year yeah. later. Or maybe it was eight months, maybe it was 14, I forget. But you can see the radical difference here. By the way, folks, this is after just a single procedure. Yeah, one pass. Right, and maybe it took us six hours to do this procedure. Uh, 3,000 grafts, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, but six, six hours and change. But you would never know that no. he had had surgery oh, in the past. Absolutely not. 
You know, something I like about these last two shots here too, let's see if I can, if I, so something I wanted to point out between this shot and this shot is if you look at where the patient's hairline is drawn on in this shot, compared to where it is when we click forward here, look how much lower his hairline appears to be with respect to that purple line. Something I always caution patients um, when so you're- You would say the actual hair is- Yeah, I, I would is, say the, the appearance of where his hairline is is actually about a centimeter lower than that purple line. Something I always caution patients about is starting the hairline too low. A lot of times we have younger patients who come in and they say, no, you know, the line you draw on, drew on is too high. My hairline started, you know, here. Oh, yes. Started, started a quarter yes. of an inch above my eyebrows. And that's obviously, it can be the case for some young guys. Maybe that's what your hairline was like in junior high. But part of our job is designing a hairline that is, some people call it age appropriate. Um, some people call it a little more conservative. What I tell patients is two things. Number one, we have to design a hairline that looks as good at 21 as it will at 51 or 61, because this hair is permanent, folks. You know, that hairline is gonna be there forever. And number two is you have to design a hairline with future loss in mind. You know, this gentleman has been fortunate thus far and his loss behind it is, is pretty well stabilized, but some people continue, almost all people continue to lose pretty progressively. So you have to remember that if you start too low and too flat here, you could run out of graphs. You could be very front loaded as we refer to it and run out of graphs here. And something else I always express upon patients is even though this line is drawn here with the way that the hair kind of falls back on itself and poofs out is it always looks lower. You know, look how much lower that looks comparatively to this. So just something to, oops, jumped a little farther. Just something to point out there. Right. If we go back to that before picture, you'll notice that he has, we're actually reflecting his hair backwards here so that you can see the bald area. The problem is when he took his hair and dropped it down here, it looked very see-through. It had a very unnatural look to it because if he was able to just simply take his hair here, comb it over the front, he wouldn't have bothered coming in for a hair transplant. No. He would have been very happy. Yeah. You know, I'll just style my hair down and I'll go out. He got to a point where that just wasn't working for him anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's a pretty common yeah. story is people were able to pull that off for a while and eventually it, it gets to the point where it looks unnatural or you just can't do yeah. it any longer. A lot of the hair you're seeing here is from the back. It's coming from the back. But if you look at this, if you can see this little bit of hair here, there's only one thing those hairs could be. His hair That's complete transplant. Has there, to yeah. be. Yeah. Then there's a mixture of some of his original hair, our transplants here, and even some of his hair from the back. Mm -hmm. So here's from the side, and again, you can see he still has that wonderful shock of hair on the top, but he's just missing that that inch, inch and a quarter in the front. And there it is with the hair grown in. And again, you can see that all of this is standalone. Yeah, right? it's completely transparent. And if he wanted to, well, I can make this thicker, you know, I'm sure. Oh, we could do a uh, second pass. If he wanted thicker, he could have it. But what I like about this is it stands on its own. It looks very natural. It just looks like he's beginning to lose his hair mm -hmm. here. And I would recommend that he wouldn't get a second transplant. I would rather keep the hair for the Oh, future. I agree. If, if he came back in, I, w I wouldn't say to do a second one. I would, I would tell him that he looks good as is and to, uh, you know, keep a little reserve in the bank. Yes. Yeah. But keep your money in the bank. Keep your hair in keep the bank. Keep your hair in the bank. There that sounds are. pretty good. That's a business card, I think, right there. Well, Feller and Bloxham business card. Right well, there. I always thought uh, Feller and Bloxham, we won't make you any uglier. That's not bad, too. That's, okay. So I'm Dr. Feller. Dr. Bloxham. Enjoy. Hope you enjoyed. Of course they enjoyed. Yeah.